drink from glasses, not bottles. That's how you do it. It's classy. What do you got there? Some yogurt? Nah, it's some steak. You have steak? Yeah, got a lot of steak. Man. Oh, I got to put my background in. I wasn't able to do my WrestleMania five background. That's what our that's what our viewers wanted. Oh yeah, but, figure it out. No, I didn't. Shit. But I'm gonna be at the cornfield. When I pulled up to my neighborhood right now, I saw some crumb bums outside walking through the back alley. What's up? What huh? are they doing? They just look doing? like they look like people that would check uh, door handles, see if anybody's op cars open. Those guys are pathetic. Yeah, I don't like it at all. Pathetic. Completely. I drove around the block once just to see if they they came back in. They seem like they're a bunch of bad natured people. Mm hmm. We hate bad natures. We do. Hey, question. Where did you get this at? This oh. was in the snack box the last time you came, and this has been like the best snack box treat ever. Yeah, yeah. Never ends, huh? It feels like it never ends, and when it ends, I got to reply. I feel, I, I definitely feel like I need to replace it. I think it's just at Walmart. Walmart has a lot of wacky snacks like that where you like, oh. I've never seen, I know Patrick had said they have the Macho Man, Macho Size Slim Jim over there, but I've yeah. never seen that either. I see those at uh, Big Lots or like near the checkout. It's like a thick one. In Walmart? Um, or Big Lots or, or Walmart or wherever. That's actually what it's called, right? The Macho Size? Yeah, I check big lots. I feel like that's one of the things they have in the on the way to the checkout. Who's the lots we're representing for the macho man? And so there, there's like a a holder that's his head. If you if you can uh, find one of those, you could probably buy it off the store. Have you actually seen that? I don't think so. I think I would ask. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so, the Waterloo. Let's talk about Waterloo. Let me, let me let me get mine. Even though I'm not drinking it right now. It's all right. I like the peach one a lot. Peach might be my favorite. I don't know. Waterloo, huh? This one. This one has become my favorite. Oh. You like the limoncello? I was gonna say I don't really like the limoncello. It's like too. It seems like it has like a creamy, a creamy taste to it yeah, at the end. I don't like it for some reason. Really? Yeah, I don't know so what it is. So tell me, what do you, what do you like about the Waterloo? I like the Waterloo because they, I like those flavors like the blackberry lemonade, the lemonade, the strawberry lemonade, watermelon lemonade. I just like, the, I like their vibe. And they're they're yeah. not. I don't think they're as carbonated as the Lacroix or even the Soleil's. Yeah. Personally. Yeah, it's like less carbonation and and more flavor. They definitely have more flavor. I would give you that. They do have more flavor. What do they have in there? I don't know. Natural flavors. They're from Austin, Texas. Well, that's definitely not good. Cause you know the only thing from Texas. Steers Inc. Sorry to say it. If anybody's out there offended by Texas, Cowboys, or anything else, I only got two things to say to you. Fuck them. Yeah. They don't like Texas. There ain't nothing good that's ever happened in Texas. Kennedy got killed over there in Texas. You know how you feel about the Cowboys, and we know where they're from. They are the worst of the fucking worst. And now they're fucking stupid little fucking fans. All of a sudden, the Cowboys win one game in blowout fashion, granted, mind you. Now they won the goddamn Super Bowl. Let's just cancel the fucking NFL season right now on September 13th. We're just not going to have the season because the Cowboys won one game, one game in September. Crown them. Crown their ass. Up oh, right now. And they're stupid fans. They think they're just going to win the Super Bowl. They just won the Super Bowl. 
No, I don't think I don't know if the Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl, but I can promise you this. Mark my words. Mark it down. Seven forty-one on September thirteenth. The Dallas Cowboys will not win the Super Bowl. Granted, to popular belief, contrary to popular belief, after last Sunday's performance, you don't win this damn Super Bowl in September. You just don't. No, it's not. It's not possible. But these guys, they just think they're the best. And yeah, guess what's going to happen this week? They're going to get to play the poor Jets. The poor Jets just lost their Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, they might beat the living dog shit out of the Jets this week. Why not? The Jets still won, right? But the Jets, I'll give you one. Yeah, the Jets did win. But the Jets, they got a little bit of heart. I give the Jets. The Jets play some hardcore defense. And the Jets are going to give the Cowboys some problems. Yeah, the Cowboys may win. They might. But get, then again, they might not. Yeah, yeah. They might not. True. But to all you Dallas Cowboy lovers out there, to all you Texas fans, to everybody that thinks hook them horns, steers it. I only got one thing to say to you. Fuck you. I don't know if I might have to bleep some of this just because uh, I feel Fuck like you, Robbie. there's going to be a algorithm for hate speech or something like you're. You're not hate speech, and you're just talking about how the Cowboys suck. I just don't think you win the Super Bowl in September. I mean, it's been almost 30 years since those guys have won a Super Bowl, so I know they've forgotten. They've forgotten the feeling, what it takes. They're just, they're the worst. Anybody that supports the Dallas Cowboys, I wish I wish they would do a, a special Dallas Cowboys versus the Taliban. I would go for the Taliban. I'm, yeah. I'm doubling down on that. I hate the Dallas Cowboys. They are the worst people in the world. Yeah. Far none. Not even close. Well, well. And that's all I got to say on that. Feel okay. free to comment in the comment section if you love the Dallas Cowboys, if you hate the Dallas Cowboys, if you think the Dallas Cowboys are America's team. Yeah, they are the America's team. And that's the problem with America right now. The Dallas Cowboys, America's team. I don't even understand this America's team bullshit. Like, it's what does that even bullshit. mean? It's like more Americans love the Cowboys than any other team. I don't think that's true at all. It, Like, why would, why, there's, it's like, why would somebody from fucking Seattle love the Cowboys? They would love the Seahawks or whatever, you know, like what, what is going on? I, I don't get that term. It's just like something losers come up with like, oh yeah, like they're, they're America's team. Like, what does that fucking mean? Does Mexico, are you talking North America? Do, do Canada and Mexico love the Cowboys or something? Like what's happening? I, I can't imagine anybody loves the Cowboys. And to those of you that out that are out there and you love the Cowboys, shame on you. Shame on you. You should be ashamed of yourself. And that's not the Oktoberfest talking either. That is Chris Adams saying the truth. Tell me when I'm lying. Tell me when I'm lying. Uh, so, yeah, that, I mean, we just, we just blitz through two topics right there. Sparkle waters and uh, dipshit cowboys, the first two topics. So back to the... Back to the wall. Well, neighbors are out there having quite a good time. I might have to go whip their ass. They think they're the damn Dallas Cowboys. I think Emmett Smith might be over there. I think Novacek might be over there. Yeah, a big, big, bad, freaking Brian Dawkins is going to go over there and get his fucking hard fucking cock out and fucking show those Dallas Cowboys how you. Whoa. Yeah. The yeah. This. NFL Hall of Famer. When's the last Dallas Cowboy to be in the NFL Hall of Fame? Not like Brian motherfucking Dawkins, number 20. And that's another thing that drives me batshit crazy. Brian Dawkins was the badass motherfucking eagle of all time. He's the only guy that should ever be able to wear a dark visor with his helmet. I can't understand why these motherfuckers go out there and the eagles... And they wear those dark visors. They're not badasses. They're not Brian Dawkins. Take the fucking visor, especially on a night game. You don't need a visor. What the fuck's the matter with those guys? That drives me bonkers. The light's I, too bright for you? What? Artificial light too bright for you? I know. 
They think they're Brian Dawkins. They ain't no Brian Dawkins. Take them fucking dark visors off. Drives me a shit. What are they thinking? I just don't understand. You don't take that motherfucking visor off. The only guy that was badass enough and was a real badass was Brian Dawkins to wear that dark visor at night on a night game. Yeah. I just don't understand. You guys, you little pipsqueak motherfuckers wear your dark visor. You're not intimidating. You're not in the Hall of Fame. Take the visor off. They're, Unreal. Uh, they're wannabes for sure. Well, that's a good person to emulate. Brian Dawkins. I yeah. challenge all I challenge all of our seven listeners to go onto YouTube and watch Brian Dawkins highlights. If you're not inspired to go out there and be better at your job after watching Brian Dawkins highlights on YouTube for 10 minutes, yeah. there's you have a problem. You love the Dallas Cowboys just a little bit too much for me. Because if you don't watch Brian Dawkins go out there and suplex the guy from the Redskins or just jump like he was freaking Wolverine tackling the guy from the Giants, you got a problem. You just got a problem. And I hope that you have medical insurance at your job to go get your ass checked out because you should be ready to go and get 1% better every day for the rest of the year at your life. I challenge you guys out there not to suck at life. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a hard challenge for uh, most people out there. You know, maybe not don't our seven suck. listeners, but or watchers. Don't suck at life. Yeah. Don't fall with the Dallas Cowboys. Don't wear a dark visor on a Nike. Yeah. Okay, let's get on to some positive shit now. What was Dawkins? Uh, did he have a nickname? B Doc, Weapon X, the Idiot Man. The idiot bag? What does that mean? Idiot man. He called himself the idiot man when he went out there on the field because he just, he, he, man, Brian Dawkins was the greatest man of all time that ever put that Eagles uniform on. Really? Every ounce of energy and passion, sweat, blood, tears on that field. He gave it all for the Philadelphia Eagles. See, Daryl Dawkins' guy, son? What was that, Dan? Daryl Dawkins' son? No, no, he was not Daryl Dawkins. He wasn't Chocolate Blunder. This was Brian Dawkins, B Doc, number 20 for the Eagles, NFL Hall of Famer. Yeah. Greatest man, in my opinion, that ever put that Eagles uniform on. Put in the comments if you think there's other people. I mean, the argue, can, argument can be made for Reggie White, obviously, Reggie White, but yeah. I just feel like Brian Dawkins was. Had so much energy, passion, love, played his ass off, never quit. I just, Dan, I want you to go and watch when we're done today. You go watch. There's, you just type in on your little phone or whatever PDA, whatever device you have. PDA. Just type in Brian, Brian Dawkins highlights. Okay. And PDA. you'll be over there. You're going to run through that freaking wall. You're going to take Garfield. Garfield's going to be freaking... Super Garfield after he watches he's if 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 you had some fish, if you had little goldfish with you in a little fish bowl watching those highlights, those little goldfish would turn into jaws after they watched Brian Dawkins highlights. Really? That's how badass he was. They turn in those little goldfish would turn into jaws. Is he still alive? Yeah. Hell okay. yeah. Maybe we could get him on the podcast and do a motivational Oh my god, that would be so cool. Does he have camp now? We can get what a from it. Does he have cameo? I don't know. We, I'll look I don't up know. We're talking about Dawkins still. He's the greatest man of all time that ever wore that Eagles uniform. I have to look who this is. I never. I don't know number, if I've even seen number him. twenty. I don't want you to get distracted. If you watch highlights right now, we're gonna we're gonna. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna watch highlights. I just want to see if he's on cameo or something. I don't know what cameo is. Oh, it, wait. Daryl's his father. No, Daryl's not his father. Yeah, that's what it says. Uh, or no, Nick Dog, cousin Brian Dog. Oh, it his uh, it's his nephew. No way. I think so. No, no, I gotta. I'm not supposed to use my phone when I'm podcasting. I can't look at. I mean, we want to give the viewers accurate, accurate. No, there's no real. I can't imagine there's there's, there's, there can't be a no, relation. Are you gonna argue? There's no relation. Dawkins. What? You you know Nicholas Dawkins? 
I never met Nicholas Dawkins. Okay, he's a uh, he's a uh, apparently a uh, football player from uh, Allentown, PA. Allentown, home of the Songbird. Yeah, yeah. The and original was, home. He was a red shirt or something somewhere, but then it says full name Nick Paul Doc Dawkins, Janice and Daryl Dawkins are his parents. Two sisters, father Dawkins. Daryl played professional basketball, including 14 years in the NBA with Philadelphia 76ers, New Jersey Net, blah, 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 blah. Cousin Carl Anthony Towns played University of Kentucky. Cousin Dion Dawkins played football at Temple in an NFL on Buffalo Bills. Oh, okay, maybe not then. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I went way off the script, but. Dude, not only is Dawkins, I don't think there's any relation, but yeah. he's got his own, he's got his own Wawa hoagie. Hoagie! Oh. We're talking about hoagies now! He owns a hoagie's place? No, but he has his own hoagie at Wawa called The Dog. Oh, okay, that's named after. Grilled, chi grilled chicken parmesan, spinach, tomato, pickles, sweet peppers, and yellow mustard. God damn! That's Jeez. killer! It's like today, I wanted the, I wanted the Chris Adams special. I wanted to get a sourdough roll cut halfway down the middle with a little bit of cream, with kind of a lot of cream cheese, some cranberry, nice. some jelly cranberry, and some turkey. I just really, really, I would, I would kill right now for a turkey sandwich right now. I would just kill for a turkey sandwich right now. If I could have a turkey sandwich, right. I'd be happy right now. Yeah. Starving. Brian Dawkins did used to have cameo, but it's not available right now. So I think he gave up after doing a few of them. So I was you hoping to get him a motivational speech or like get him on the podcast or something. But I don't know. Well, in this in this day and age, there is different ways of reaching out to him. Maybe we could find an email. Yeah. Maybe we could. Um, we got an agent. We could hit up the agent. That would be unbelievable. Man, I would love to meet them. I would. Oh man. Maybe by uh, episode one, we'll get we'll get it done. We'll see. He he was my hero growing up, man. That was the greatest eagle ever, number twenty. Yeah. Awesome, awesome eagle. Sounds like a great guy. He just embodied embodied what it meant, and and I think he was even a better teammate. I think his teammates like really responded to his like leadership and he really like captivated those guys because for the most part they were just jabronis his teammates he oh, yeah. brought these guys to the next level up a notch hey did you did you get the reference that i made earlier when we were texting about sean michaels in 97 jumping up and down with like when he won the year Cow like the cowboys do yeah the was, I, i'll never forget jim ross saying that on commentary that was like right in that like 97 era when the attitude era was like kind of getting birth yeah and he said and Shawn michaels he's jumping up and down like he just won the wwf championship again and like they kind of like indirectly shit on the european championship that Shawn michaels had just won exactly yeah that doesn't they should i mean i don't know maybe the way he said it was wrong maybe he's maybe he's trying to make it seem like an important title but just didn't didn't come off in the way JR said it. You'll have to go watch that. I think that was at that insurrection, one of those European oh, pay-per-views. Yeah. I think that's when they changed the finish on the Bulldog. Yeah, he's dedicated to his dying sister, and then Sean's like, I'll oh, lose. And it's like, all right, whatever. No big deal. Man, those were some good Vince photos. Shout out to Jesus, Romero, Pat. Yeah. Tony Dan. Anybody that sent in, the, in our little group, in our group text, that sent pictures of Vince looking like the Adams family or anybody else for that matter, those were, man, those were some good, some good photos, man. Shout out to the peeps out there. Shout out to the Wolf Pack. Um, yeah, that was, that fucking Vince, man. Like, he really, he really pulled the old man, like, it's like he was going great for years and years, and then all of a sudden he's like, well, I look really fucking old and weird now. Better just dye my, everything jet black. 
grow a fucking jet black mustache and it's just I don't know. Nobody tells him no or whatever. Are you seeing this? I keep seeing like a flash on the screen. Is a uh, are you seeing that or is that just maybe it's just my monitor is going out or something? I I'm, I'm I'm good. I just see I just I, I see everything clearly right now. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't record like that, but whatever, we'll see. Could be a hackers. I, did you hear about MGM got hacked? No. So I, I maybe it's just because I'm in Vegas. My friend works for a sports book, but uh, so the this uh, Russian apparently it's this Russian hackers uh, thing called Black Cat. They uh they hacked the fucking MGM system. From what I saw online. I don't know if this is true, but the what I'm seeing is that um, they went on LinkedIn and found like some company person's uh, account and then like called a help desk under that account or through it or like w something to do with that. They did some kind of scam and then they somehow hacked the system and f fucked up everything and like they they want 30 million ransom and then they'll they'll leave shit alone or fix it or whatever. Um, and I, apparently they did this to Caesar's palace like a few weeks ago and Caesar's paid them the money. You're kidding. Before it got out so that they wouldn't have problems. But MGM is either not paying or, or just holding out or what or doing something, but it's fucking up. Like it fucked up like their parking system, their, uh, slot machine, a bunch of slot machines. If you get a payout. Then you have to have somebody come over and pay you. They it can't pay from the machine. There's like uh, hotels, like just a bunch of bullshit. Like every like the sports book was totally down on, and they did it on Sunday, opening day. Yeah, so they they knew. Oh man, this was severely planned, huh? Oh for sure, and they I mean, I can't imagine they they haven't already lost thirty million. Like it's probably. I mean, I know you maybe you don't want to negotiate with these terrorists, but I don't know. You're losing more than thirty million off of this, probably, and you could have just nipped it in the bud and figured it out later before you. Like I keep seeing online, there's just all these lines to get into the hotel, like to check in, and it's just all it's fucked. So really, my buddy works for a sports book, and he said it's fucked. They might be, he might be off for like two weeks or something until they fix this or yeah so that's weird so like the hackers are coming or the bad guys like i tell my people that work for me the bad guys are getting good like they, they can really fuck you good now yeah they sure can so you think you think this is like a two-week problem i mean they just think like they're they're talking like oh they'll either figure it out or Damn or whatever, but I who knows? It could be fixed today. I don't know, but it didn't. It wasn't looking good yesterday. Still, there's like it was getting worse yesterday between Sunday and yesterday. Hey, but Caesars, you said Caesars paid them off to make the problem go away. Supposedly, they shit started happening, and then Caesars like just like gave them the money so that they could they wouldn't be down long enough. So, uh, so who's needs. to say that they don't come back in six weeks and hit Caesars up for a hundred million dollars? It's true. I don't. I don't really know uh, how the hacking shit works and how like you can ensure that it's not going to happen again. And the rent. I mean, like, yeah, if it, it's like they held up Caesars, and if say they did pay, then they all they did was jump to MGM next, and they're like, we want money from them, and it's like, well, what about uh? Who's going to be next? Like, there's other places that uh, win and all these other fucking casinos, companies, station. Aria. Yeah. Aria's part of MGM. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, they, there's, so Aria, yeah, and Aria's fucked. And, like, I saw, like, the, the phone system was down. So they had a, a walkie-talkie taped to the elevator, and they're like, in case any there's any problem. Call on the walkie talkie. It was like, oh, but are people were were worried they weren't gonna get paid, like employees. So I don't know. 
be hey, fun. The bad, the bad guys are getting good. Yep. And sure. they will fuck you royally. Yep. It's true. I wonder if they're trying to pull any of that. We're going to have to ask our special correspondent, Patrick, if they're trying to pull any bullshit out there at the Chumash. Yeah, I wonder if that's ever happened there. I mean, international. I mean, they could pinpoint. They could probably pinpoint like places like that, but they're probably like, eh. I bet Chumash makes like a fraction of what the MGM properties do. You know, so right? Why, why even bother? Hey, but, who's the like the place that owns Caesar's Palace? Are they just? Is there what other casinos are part of the Caesar's like? I forget. It used to be Bally's, and uh, is that is that their like parent thing? Is Caesar's like the parent? I think so. Yeah, Caesar's Entertainment, and then it's like it used to be Bally's and some other ones. Uh, I forget, but it's not like it's MGM has a ton, and the MGM just had a like a fucking cybersecurity uh, convention like a few months ago. <laughs> it's like what <laughs> you should have signed up for some of these systems or whatever guys or gotten some deals or i don't know kind of weird but uh whatever so what no betting no betting at mgm for the foreseeable future maybe not i have the bet mgm app so i guess i can't make any bets for a little bit not that i ever do trying to stay yeah, up. probably bet dude at the end of the day the house always wins huh that's why they have those big ass casinos. Yeah, I don't know. I, like I would bet on like UFC or something. Did you end up watching the UFC this past weekend? I I watched it over here at my place. I was like kind of. I wonder what's going on with Israel because that was the last thing I would have thought. That was the last result I would have thought would have happened. I saw the clips. He just looked flat. Like he he couldn't like move around and get going and whatever. I think he just. Uh, I don't know, he did he did that one time he was he, well he lost the one fight and he was doing really good and then he lost or like who did he fight that was a heavy like a light heavyweight and he kind of got smoked just because he was I think he fought at light heavyweight he fought he fought at like one class of one class above and it, to me personally it feels like anytime he fights he fights somebody that's physically bigger than him that's where he gets in trouble because all that guy did he like wrestled him and he just got him like he fucked him up not really fucked him up he got him down and then he wrestled him and then he just rode him so it looked like he controlled the whole deal you know it was yeah. a white guy like a russian white guy got it like i think i know what you're talking about i can't remember his name but... and then that kickboxing guy he's he physically does look bigger than him so that's where i personally think and i think israel's like pound for pound the best like fighter when he stays in his like specific deal but when he gets in trouble is when he fights the like the physically bigger guys than himself yeah. like if he fought jones jones will whip his ass i think oh yeah, yeah, jones, yeah. jones will kill his ass that was why the they, they wanted him to try and win the 205 title or get in the picture so he could fight jones because that'd be a big fight but yeah as he, soon as he, he lost looked, to that white guy that i was telling that that white guy that was about like three or four five it was about a year ago when he fought that guy it was a couple years ago i think i thought it was about it was about 2022 right about this time last year he fought that guy and that guy beat him. We should look that up. It wasn't. Yeah, I think I watched it. I, I watch definitely it. watched it. Yeah, but uh. And even that kickboxer. I think that kickboxer that that's knocked him out three times. Hmm. Pereira is that his name? Yeah. He's like physically bigger than Israel is. Yeah, but he wasn't even in that fight. He wasn't winning. Uh, no, he got lucky and he knocked him out. So and he knocked him out. So yeah, I think. And there's obviously some, either something wrong or he's getting old and he's not, like, reacting as well. Or because he's had a lot of fights. He had, like, 100 pro fights. Yeah. Be getting slow, like, for a fighter, even though he's, like, in his 30s. Could be he's slow. got a lot of miles. He's got a lot of miles on him. Dang, so. Could be that or it could be just injury. It could be in. Because that Strickland guy, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm not the, like, most knowledgeable UFC guy, but I didn't feel Strickland deserved that fight. But kudos to Strickland because he took advantage of the opportunity. The late replacement, right? I believe so. Yeah, it was like five weeks out, so that's another thing. So I don't know if he got a fair camp and like knew he's fighting and like maybe maybe it would be different. Maybe it won't. We'll see. 
they'll probably do a rematch because they're Strickland versus anybody is not going to draw as much as Israel a, versus yeah Arizona uh, Songbird. Yeah. Yeah, so Strickland's like he's like borderline one notch above Jabroni, if not Jabroni. Yeah, he's yeah. Jabroni. But kudos to him. He did take advantage of, of his opportunity. Yeah, Shout time. out to Oktoberfest. Yeah, there you go. The greatest stuff ever. I have to get some. Man, you know what else? I could just go, like I said earlier, a turkey sandwich. Yeah. Plus some shrimp at Red Lobster would be really nice too, man. Oh, yeah. All uh, right. I'm on this diet and it's just killing me, man, because I'm starving myself. Wow. I go to Panda Express and I eat vegetables now. I don't even get noodles. I don't even get. I get the freaking ro- the damn um stream bean chicken and the mushroom chicken and it's full of mushrooms and zucchini and bullshit and God bless it, man. I want orange chicken. Yeah, it sucks when you're trying to eat healthy. I'm starving right now, everybody. I've been eating really clean, and then uh, today at work, all they had was some fucking uh, some bullshit. Like they just had a bunch of pizza. Well, it's so it's an NHL like practice arena, and they're having a bunch of NHL players come in and go like, like you know, you you turn on the you see a commercial. It's like I'm here for Wednesday night hockey, like shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was basically that, and uh, is that a like a place where they practice the nights practice or whatever? So they have a, a restaurant bar, but it's like a uh, it's, it's like bar food. So it's like a lot of pizza, or like chicken wings, bu- buffalo wings, boneless buffalo wings. So today they had I went up for lunch and they didn't have shit. Like somebody had cleared it all out, and then they brought out some pizzas. So I was like. Like, the last two days, I've been eating salads, but they didn't have any salads today, so I'm like, fuck. Whatever, there's all there is is fucking pizza and buffalo wings, so I eat all those. And I'm like, yeah, fucked up today, so. Hey, the NHL players pretty cool, guys? I mean, Did you have any interaction? Real, interaction? They all seemed very nice. Uh, they just walked by, and you'd be like, I was like, go in this room, and then they'd go in the room, and then they'd be like, okay, bye. Like, that was about it, if I even talk to them, so it was, they seemed fine. Nobody's really, like, the, the one of the people, like, running the show was a dickhead, like, telling them where to go. It's like, we're fucking recording, and there's sound. You can hear everything, on because the door's cracked open, because there's cords coming out. The fucker keeps just, like, talking normal voice right in front of the fucking door. It's fucking annoying. Uh-oh. Lemoncello time. Yeah, it's like, you know what it is? It's, to me, I always drink those on a uh, on a set, and it's like midday, and I'm like, eh, I don't really want that. I want, like, a, a refreshing one. That that one seems like a dessert to me. Yeah, yeah. If I was going to have agree. it, I, I like, like, instead of dessert, I'd be like, yeah, this is great. But uh, other otherwise, I'm like, midday lemoncello, I'm like, eh. Yeah, that's it's like perfect of- for me right now because I only drink them after work. And it's like yeah, perfect when I'm coming down. If I had a few edibles, if I smoked a joint, it's like yeah, yeah. it's like a treat. I feel like it's a good mixture. Like you put it with vodka, it would be good or something like that. But, but I don't- like, So if you're not going to drink a Waterloo, will you drink the LaCroix? Oh, yeah. No, I just started buying the Waterloo. Uh, I just bought them this past week because... I saw them. I was like, "Oh yeah, I like those when I had them on a set." The, they definitely I'll, the flavors are better. Yeah. I think when I first started drinking these, maybe back in about 2017, when I worked at Albertson's Orchid, when I classed up myself, yeah. and I really started drinking them and I liked them. And I thought I, I looked it up. I think there's a cola flavor Lacroix, and I was like, "Man, that one's probably the best one ever." But I've never like I've never actually seen it in person. The col a cola flavored Lacroix. I think that would be killer. I'd either. I had a Zevia, a cola. Zevia. Oh yeah, Zevia, yeah, yeah, zero sugar. Those are good. They have like the Dr Pepper flavor Zevia and an orange cream and a root beer. Mm-hmm. Those are actually this is kind of the same setup as as the sparkling water with zero sugar and zero carbs and everything. Yeah, same, yeah. Same, same, same. But yeah, I will give it up. That the Waterloo, the flavors are better. 
the the, the better flavors. Yeah. Because everybody yeah. can do orange. Everybody can do tangerine. But not everybody does strawberry watermelon. Not everybody does blackberry lemonade, you know? I'm going to tell you right now, though, this cherry limeade, it was fine. But uh, now that I'm at, like, towards the bottom, it's like, it's just like nothing. It tastes like nothing now. Did it, is that, do you think that part of that might have to do with because it warmed up to, re- like, like if you kept it ice cold, if you finished it as it was ice cold? Yeah, that might be it. Or, like, the carbonation's leaving. I know I, I really like the peach. And then I got a grape one, too. I got to try the grape one. I haven't had that in a while. But Hey, breaking, breaking news. For the Prime, there's going to be some Halloween-flavored Prime. If anybody out there cares, Fucking there's, Logan there's, two, there's two Halloween-flavored Primes coming. Okay. Breaking, gonna, breaking news. Put a fucking Car- hashtag Paul or hashtag Prime in here, and then we'll get an extra couple views from dipshits that think we're going to, like, discuss them or talk nice about them. And and we're down to about our last case of the Carmella Creeper. If anybody out there, there's about 12 units, 12 singles of Carmella Creeper at your get one. Albertson's Builted. Get it while it lasts. Uh-oh. I might be getting robbed right now. I gotta I gotta check really quick. Hold on. Okay. Crumbums came back. I got a four to have them with. Holy pizzoli. Yeah, we'll see. Hold on. All right, look at these pipes, brother. I'm not working out as hard as I want to do. I'm using different techniques. I'm trying to be a little more flexible. Kettlebell training. I'm not training for mass right now. So I know I could do a little bit better. My pipes aren't as big as they once were. But different training. I can still pump that golf ball about 330 when I need to. And I feel okay. Hopefully Dan's all right. Hopefully he's not getting robbed out there. You know, unfortunately, I'm going to get my shit in while Dan's not here because I have a, I have a platform. And I can't really think of anything I want to talk about other than I hate the fucking Dallas Cowboys. I hate Cabrillo. And there's even one other person, one other entity that I can't really discuss. But there might even be worse than the other two combined. But... That's up for you to figure out who I'm talking about. And we don't want to have a lot of dead air. I'm thinking myself, I can't. I want to get a Joe Boo figure. I think that would be really cool. But then I've really been really searching hard. I got to get a Chucky. I just think I need a Chucky figure. A Chucky doll. A Chucky figure? I want a not a fig. I want the doll. I was oh, looking. Good. I was looking at um online at the um Spencer's in the mall. You can get one of those for about a hundred bucks. I think that would be cool. I'm just like <laughs> kind of like sketchy on that because imagine that motherfucker. If somebody voodoo possessed Chucky and he goes into tax, it might fucking swear. Or like more, more importantly and likely, what if you took too many edibles? You're gonna have to put that fucker in your trunk. But then. <laughs> But then you'll be like, D- is he coming in? <laughs> like, you'll hear something like, did he get out? Dude, Chucky's legit, man. He's a fucking horror icon. Yeah. Like, I- I've, been, I've been watching all the Chucky movies because I, like, that, it, like, bells me out a little because, like, Chucky's badass. Mm-hmm. But, like, these guys are, like, kind of, like, bigger than Chucky. Like, the kids, like, Andy Barkley. He was bigger, and Chucky's over there, like, choking him and, like, piggybacking him. Dude, yeah. he's a little-ass dog. You can't. You mean to tell me you can't fucking throw Chucky off? He got that much, like, strength? And, like, you, I, I get the idea of doll possession, and, like, it's not going to be realistic, but, like, say you did possess a doll. Like, how dolls don't tend to have, like... Butterfly like, joints. Like, it, it'd just be, like, I... Like I possessed a doll and like I'm stuck, like and the I'm at the mercy of whoever fucks with me. Like I can't do anything. I don't have muscles. I don't have fucking skeleton, unless it like. But didn't we? Wait a minute. Have you ever seen Bride of Chucky? Oh yeah, I just watched it yesterday. Oh yeah. 
Hey, little well, Chucky, he was banging the freaking other guy. It's great. Yes. In the shadows, they didn't show him doing it, but. Sorry. I swear, like, in that or in C to Chucky, that, like, there's some kind of thing that it makes it seem like they do have, like, internal organs or skeletons or. Well, like, he's skeleton. kind of, they're both, they both kind of bleed. Yeah, and he gets her pregnant, right? So then. Yeah! Dude, they don't show him bucking on camera, but they show they show the freaking the shadows. It's great. Uh, yeah. Dude, that's some cinematography right there. <laughs> yeah, it's a great scene in movie history for sure. Dude, I watch that. I mean, you ever invented Chucky? Taste salute. Taste salute. You're up there with Buddy Ryan, man. Have you, you ever, ever come up with that? that? Holy pizzoli. Have you seen Puppet Thank Masters? No. Is that up there with Chucky? Well, I, you should check out a Puppet Master or two. There's about eight, and for some reason, like, I remember He's, seeing them. They used to be on USA all the time when I was younger, like, after wrestling or whatever. And uh, I'd you watch... You the only oh, thing... Let me interrupt you, sorry. The only thing that I remember after wrestling was silk stockings. Oh, I'm talking, like, Saturday morning. Oh, no, 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 no. I was talking about uh, Monday Night Wrestling. Monday Night Raw was that or La Femme Nikita. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, nah, they play like USA Movie of the Week or whatever, or, or like Weekend Movie Marathon. It was like Puppet Master 1, Puppet Master 2. And it's pretty, I don't know. I don't know if it's good. It's cool. Some of them are cool. And uh, oh. similar to Chucky and the, their dolls that come to life and then kill people. And then uh, there's like eight of them. And there's like Nazis involved. Bro, you know there's like eight Chucky movies, right? Really? I know there's uh, there's the first one, and then this Chucky Two's the one I've I, or Child's Play Two's the one I've seen a lot. That's the one with with Christina Lee. Uh, hey, but you know the cool part was when they send him to school when Barkley goes to school. Andy Barkley goes to school, and then Chucky intercepts his paper and he writes "fuck you, bitch." And then yeah. <laughs> then Mark gets in trouble. Closet, doesn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Chucky was a motherfucker. He yeah. wrote, Fuck you, bitch. That's the part where my mom didn't let me watch it anymore when I was a little kid. <laughs> when Chucky, he did that. I can't believe she let me watch Chucky. See, Night of the Living Dead was all right. But Chucky, that was like another level of bad at the Adams household when we were kids. I remember seeing the USA version. It was like you could only put so much, but then once in a while, I would play on like Showtime or something. We'd be like, "Oh, this is way better." It's like blood and stuff, and like the fuck you bitch and fuck you bitch. Yeah. Is there any way? Can you can you put that part in and cut that part in on the podcast? Chucky ready when they turn the homework in and it says "fuck you bitch." I don't know. I gotta see if the well, they might monetize it. I'm not like I'm monetizing this anyway. They might claim. Hey, are you gonna put are you gonna put a disclaimer out there for I us? I have to. This is this is a, a racy episode or the views mentioned are only approved by the two people on the show. Yeah. Gotta express the Albertsons LLC does not express discretion is advised. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I'll try and put that. Like um, they used to put at the beginning of Monday Night Raw at the very, very beginning of the Attitude Era at 8.57, remember, when they changed oh, yeah, the time frame to 8.57? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very what were they thinking? 8.57, sons of bitches. Yeah. Um, what was that? What else was it? Oh, then there was Child's Play 3, and it was like a military... Yeah, sport. yeah, I just watched yeah. that one. Yeah, that one was like not as good, I don't think. But what what was after that? Wasn't it just Seed of Chucky and like there was Bride of Chucky, Bride of Chucky, Bride of Chucky yeah. with Jennifer Tilly, yeah. and then there was Seed of Chucky. Yeah. And then and then about twenty years later, the Cult of Chucky came out in twenty thirteen. I think oh, it was the Cult. I, I don't think I've seen Cult of Chucky. And then in twenty eighteen, the sequel to Cult of Chucky, and I could have these in reverse, was the Curse of Chucky in twenty eighteen. Is yeah, Andy Barkley comes back. Wow. The same yeah. Guy. Yeah. Shit. I those those newer ones are they're pretty good. 
they're pretty good. The 2013 into 2018, the Curse and the Cult are good. I, I recommend them. Have you seen the the one with uh, Aubrey Plaza where he's it's like a remake of Chucky and it's like uh, Chucky's a robot, like an evil robot? No. That one came out probably 2018 ish. Does that is that like part of the the the? It's it's its own thing, and they didn't make a sequel, so I don't think it's going anywhere. But so it's basically it's actually Chucky taking over. Like it's not a it's not a possessed doll. It's a it's a robot evil robot doll. But it's Chucky, or I think it it's is called Chucky. Chucky. I think it's called Chucky. I I don't think it's Child's Play. I think it's called Chucky. Well, I talked to my mom, and I told my mom that she should dress her gr- oldest grandson up as Chucky. I think he would be a great Chucky. He's kind of got that little Chucky. He's kind of got a little Chucky look to him. Yeah. He wants to be a firefighter, which I can't imagine why anybody would be able to be a firefighter, because firefighters are fuckers. Why would anybody want to be yeah. a firefighter? I, I don't remember. I might have been a firefighter when I was younger, but, I yeah, I don't I, it's. Dis- now, if you had kids, would you want your kids to be a firefighter or would you want your kids to be Chucky? Probably I mean, Chucky. Ch- at that age, and you kind of have like a Chucky look to you. You can't dress up as, I mean, you can't dress up as Chucky now and like, it, I mean, you could, but it's not. Yeah, I know, I can't dress up as no Chucky, but. Chucky sized or whatever. Yeah, he's like the perfect Chucky. He's even kind of got the hair. He looks just like him. This is bullshit. He's a killer That's Chucky. That. He'd get if he went to school, he'd get the costume contest prize as the freaking best costume for Chucky. They probably, they probably don't allow costumes at school anymore. You're probably right. You're pro- that yeah. went away with Biden. I understand. Bullshit. It's ridiculous. Like the Asian kids loved it when I was little. They wouldn't dress up, but they'd be like, "Yeah, that's cool." Like they didn't seem. They, they liked making fun of us or whatever. Sons of bitches. They probably had their Dallas Cowboy hat on, too. Yeah, they're always wearing Dallas Cowboy uh, clothing because it was discounted because they suck. Yeah, they do suck. And they, you know what? They still suck. Yeah, yeah, They can uh, suck. You know what else? They can suck it. Yeah. Break it down. Hey, do you think we'll get a Mike Tyson figure now? Yeah, they were talking. Mike Tyson about it. DX? I think they were talking about it on the Major Pod one week or the other. Uh, they were like, yeah, that maybe that would be a good one to do or if you could do it. Because, yeah, you could do the DX Tyson. could be the ultimate. And then you could do, like, he has that shirt and the Austin 316 shirt and, like, whatever leather jacket or something. Book it. Book it. And if you want to do like Ali, you could easily make a boxing Tyson version to come with, like, give him gloves, whatever. It could be like a three and one. It'd be great. But uh, we'll see. I don't, they, that's all like you have to make a contract and like probably has contracts with other people and it could interfere or whatever. So but we'll see. Or they got to make a deal and pay out. So I don't know. Break it down. Yeah, what else? Uh, what other topics we got? Um, CM Punk. Yeah. Who I'm wants not- to take this one? Huh? Who wants to take this one? Are we. Yeah, it's a discussion. Um, what do you What do you think about this whole situation? What do you know? Do you know it? Have you heard everything? Or like, I know he's fired. Yeah, he got fired. No. Uh, and I had heard that he had made inquiries to go back to New York. For those of you who don't know what New York is, is the WWE. Yeah. He wanted to go back. Apparently, rumor has it, or everything that I had read online, he wanted to go back to New York at the be- for the Royal Rumble to have a match with Kevin Owens. And it, oh, yeah, some kind of... I, I read was that at that point, the WWE was not interested in his services. Yeah. He thought he could get out of his contract, maybe, and they're like, "Nah." But now that he's is out, apparently fired. Yeah. So 
But he, I don't he, know. Does he, did he burn his bridges with UFC and WWE? It could would be kind of hard for him to get into that company. Nah, he didn't burn bridges with uh, UFC. He just sucked at fighting, and they're like, "You can't fight here anymore." <laughs> like, they're like, they 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 probably don't care. Like either way, with I mean, him. you never say never, but he's. I think, of- I think there's a good chance he'll get he'll be back in WWE because it's like they just did the merger, the the people that. The Endeavor people that run the boat, everything, own everything now. They'll, uh, they want, they want quick money because they're, they're probably bleeding money from buying the thing. And they're like, we want to make some of that back. Like, who can we get to bump, like, bump stuff up even more? Yep. Who do you want to, who do you want to see CM Punk have a match with? I don't know. Like, I mean, I ought to say who he could that he never really did. Cody with. Rhodes. Roman. Yeah. Well, he could do, yeah, Cody, Roman, Seth. Sammy, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. There's power. His, the guys weren't at the, his level, and he didn't have matches with before he left. But it's like, and they. Do you want to see, do you want to see CM Punk have a match with Roman Reigns? It'd be. I mean, I'd watch it. I his so like me and this dude I uh, wrestle with, kind of. Um, we were talking about it today, and it was like this guy is like, I don't know. He he has like a at first you're all excited when he came back, and like oh he could have all these matches, and he had matches, and they're they're all pretty good. They're all good matches i think that he had i don't think he had like any shit matches that you're like i shouldn't wrestle anymore like he wrestled like he didn't wrestle every tv he he kept himself like did kind of like a hogan thing where he's he's doing a lot of hogan shit now he's older like he's like he come in he only wrestles on like pay-per-views or like special events or what or like if it is like tv He'll do like tag matches and whatever, keep himself special. But uh and they're good for the most part, but it's like I don't know. He just seems like a fuck it. he's fucking unhappy all the time. Like, all the things that people said were uh like WWE was saying that uh apparently when he went there they're like he'll never last, like He's just going to be unhappy about everything and be miserable and, like, throw fits and whatever. And then he got a, he kind of got away with it for a while because he's drawing money and Khan's not like Vince where you can't – you can uh, – he kind of let him fuck around. He let around. him do whatever he wanted. Yeah, he kind of let him fuck around and he kept trying to keep the sponsors happy and or the, the people uh, TV happy, but – at the expense of other talent, but then, uh, yeah, it just came down to it. He's like, it, it, it feels like he'll go there. It'll be good for a while. And then something will happen. He'll complain or whatever. He's, he was pulling a lot of Hogan shit, but in front of the camera, like he, like Hogan in, uh, he it behind it. yeah, he would baby face the camera. He'd be like, Oh brother. Like, WWE is the best place in the world, and the, or WWE is the best place in the world. And then when everybody's back was turned, or like behind the scenes, he'd be like, "I ain't jobbing to this fucker," and like, "I want to beat this guy," and like, "I should be put over." And I'm not losing, blah blah blah. Whereas Punk's like, "That fuck!" At, right before the first fight last year, he goes <laughs> goes to the fucking uh, press conference and just talks all this shit, like pr- kind of runs down the company as like bunch of children or whatever like right in front of the boss just kind of like what is he doing but he was talking about the daycare that he works with fucking children at a daycare yeah while he was drinking a spin drift yeah and eating a muffin and shit it's like like he had all the leverage and and then he did it and you could tell he planned it out he knew he was gonna do he He went into business for himself yeah and it was like Oh, fuck. And then if the fight hadn't happened, you would think, like, Tony would have been like, blah, 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 you can't do that. Blah. Like, 
fucked up. Like maybe would have yelled at him. I don't know how that how he works behind the scenes. But then the fucking fight happened, and it's just like, oh, we just gotta like have it. And he tore his fucking tricep or some shit. So then it's just like he's gone anyway for a while. And he came back. It'll blow this- over. It'll blow over. And then he came back, and it's like everything seemed a little better. But then this fucking Jungle Boy shit is like, ugh. I don't so know. What, what the fuck happened with Jungle Boy? I don't. I bet they'll just keep him out for like a long time, if at all, and or maybe they'll cut him. I don't know. I don't. I don't know that he. He was. He. I don't think he made a good move there at all. Like, because I. I don't see him as being a guy that WWE would take in, especially if they're gonna take in Punk, and. uh he was kind of like one of AEW's guys that they they give stuff home, to. Home, homegrown guy. Remember when we saw a young Jungle Boy that time at SummerSlam with it, Luke Perry? Oh, he brought the kids. Yeah, yeah. We walked by him, didn't we? Like cross his path when when we were going to our. Maybe you did. I don't recall, but probably. Um, I thought I thought we in in the first SummerSlam we went to in 2009. I could uh, be mistaken. But if we go watch that, I think they show Luke Perry in the crowd with his kids. Oh. And I thought I thought he was going one way and we were going another way. I thought. I could be wrong. I just don't think he would ever be uh, sitting anywhere near where we were sitting that first year. We no, were I think he was going to get nachos or something. Or he was going to uh, get a beer. And we were going yeah, to our way and he was going his way. And I think we crossed. I think we did. 29, yeah. 2009. I, I don't recall that. Remember we saw the guy from Terminator 2? I remember that. I remember he was in the bathroom pissing next to like Joey or somebody or you or but uh I don't remember the Perry's. But yeah, that jungle boy, I don't know. He he made a real bad call, like whether even if he was just like I don't know, somebody must have hyped him up or something. Like he was just like or he's really pissed about not being able to use glass and he's like, Oh, we did it now, fucker like and then like to I don't know. Just trying, he was trying to start a fight almost. And then Punk did f- do whatever. And then it's just like, well, yeah, you got to fire him. And you probably should fire. I don't know. Jungle Boy, it depends what really happened. I don't, I, I wasn't there, but maybe, maybe Jungle Boy didn't do anything physical. And then that's why Punk got fired. But I don't know. It's uh, long we'll story short is I think Punk's, Punk's gone. And I think they're happy about Punk being gone in the in the grand scheme of the big picture of things. Is now, whether he goes back to New York, he was. A, want to see he, Punk have a match with Seth Rollins? Because yeah. remember, Seth Rollins on one of those pre pre WWE shows. Oh, Philly, Phil, you're a cancer, and we don't want you. Whatever he said, like he called him out by name, and he's like, "Whoa!" They never like on a WWE on a scripted WWE show. You would never see anybody see say say that. And Seth Rollins did it. He was like, yeah, well, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm sure if they tell him to work with him, Seth will love to. He's and he's probably just, I mean, he's probably just working angles and shit anyway. Like, I don't know, maybe he has a personal problem. Anybody that's friends with Colt Cabana is probably doesn't like the guy because that's right. You're right. Situation, but it's like. Eh. I don't know, fucking punk. He just seems unhappy. Like Kevin he just Nash seems like a miserable bastard. Yeah, Kevin Nash on his podcast was like, at this point, you kind of just have to like go. Is he has like a mental health problem or what? Like maybe he needs therapy or something because this is like millions of dollars on the line, and you had all these chances to not go this far, and like he's just like, I don't know, it's just like, what is he doing? He's just like causing trouble and he is like they're giving him everything he wants and then like what what was the thing that he was unhappy about that he had to talk all that shit last year and be like they're children and blah like he's the champion of the fucking company what is he complaining about he's making all this money he gets he has his own schedule and he has his own show and whatever it's just weird i don't know why is he so concerned he's like like he's running the company like it was his company, and he's complaining. Yeah, I, could never, I, I never quite figured out what set him off. Yeah, whatever. He just wanted to send a pipe bomb. Yeah, we don't I know think. everything. I'm sure there's stuff we don't know, or maybe maybe he's right. Maybe he's the um, 
He's in the right. He's the voice of the voiceless at this point because he doesn't have a platform and you don't see he's not doing any stuff on social media right now. Oh yeah. Well we could get I mean I I tried to hit him up. I can't DM him though, so well I'll try if I ever get a hold of him, I'll try and get him on the podcast. We don't even have to talk wrestling, you just talk about like uh comic books, horror yeah. movies, yeah. rap music, yeah. music, yeah. fucking yeah. chicks. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if that happens. Maybe him and uh, Brian Dawkins on the same episode. Well, no, because Brian Dawkins is actually a strong, devout Christian fella. Dean Mellon uh, is a good ma- mannered teammate and cares about people, where CM Punk is just an inconsiderate prick. Yeah. They're, I don't think that would be like two good, two good guests at the same. At least those two. That's like oil and gas. Yeah. Um, God, I, t- I, I called my mom when I was driving home. I was just going to say hi. And then now she's calling me right now because I said I'd be call her back around 830. I don't know what's going on. There's too many things. Um, yeah, what else is Kearney's we- oh. baby boy. This is her son. This is Kearney's baby boy. She's bored. She's probably bored because Patrick's not there. She he changed the schedule to Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. I think. So Saturday, now, Sunday, Monday off. He struck the gold mine. Well, I think he always has opportunities to get that, and then he just like lets other people have it and takes like certain days. But so he maybe, can help build the team because Patrick's like a fucking MVP teammate. Yeah, but he now he's like fuck it. I'm taking the fucking. Uh, Patrick I, has always I, been a big I, picture thinker. This is the big box. picture. Yeah, exactly. Um, Shout out to you, Pat. MVP, you got the chair here. Yep. Although right. when we were negotiating, you went and hid. But we won't say too much about that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was checking out the other furniture. Maybe he was going to get one, too. But when I was over there complaining, he wasn't over there helping me complain. Oh. But it worked out. It worked out good. All's good. It ended well. <laughs> Recliner now, new recliner. Yeah, where do you see this motherfucker, man? It's classed up the swamp. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Oh. Now we got three. Oh, three? three? Did you get rid of one? You just kept Oh, I asked Patrick if he wanted the, if he wanted the one, and he, he, he said he didn't want it. Okay. I, was, I offered it to him, and he asked me, funny story. He said, how old do you think that chair is? I was like, well, Pat, I know I got it in 1999. And I was like, you know what? I know how to read these labels. I used to know how to read the label. So we opened it up and I looked at the label. So remember the bigger fabric chair that I had, the lighter the lighter of the two, two chairs? That one was made in 1994. Holy shit. And I got it in 1999. And it was like almost new when I got it because the lady – the lady that had it, we delivered it to her. We delivered her another chair, and she didn't like that one that I got because it was like it was like too big for her. So she she didn't use it. And me and Chris and Tori were delivering at the time, and I was and we were gonna have to take that thing to the dump. Oh shit! And and I deferred to him. I was like, "Do you want that chair?" He's like, "No, I don't want it." And I think why he didn't want it was because he had a bad experience with one before. Same situation, and the one that he got was, like, broke. And he, we kind of learned how to work on him to a certain extent and fix him. And the one that he got, I think, he couldn't fix. But this one has been – I've had this guy since 1999, and I offered it to Pat, and he didn't want it. So I was like, all right, we we made room, and and now there's three. There's three recliners facing facing the TV now. Great. Swamp. It's a good deal, man. Swamp uh, pay-per-view parties. So yeah, that 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 recliner was built in '94. I got it. In, I've had it since '99. Yeah. So it's almost been 25 years that I've had the chair, and I've had good luck with it. That's crazy. And then the other one I bought when I bought the Cypress House, I got that one in 2009. Yeah. So I have a '94 of 2009. In a 2023. Lazy boy. Dang. Crazy, huh? 
my first it. job, my first job ever was at Lazy Boy. That's the only furniture that I have in my my own home. Trip out, and then even at my mom, she still has. Cause hey, shout out to Mr. King, best boss I ever had. She still has uh, a chair that I got for her birthday in that same year in '99. And Mr. King, King's Furniture, first job ever, greatest job I ever had, best people to work for. He gave it to me at cost. Oh, really? He gave me a recliner at cost, and then me and Chris delivered it to my house. That's and my mom still has that. So that one was from 99. Awesome. So we've had nothing but success, nothing but good good fortunes with Lazy Boys. Yeah, at, yeah. My first job. That's a good story. Uh, um, we, our recliners don't last that long. Or my dad's, he would fuck them up. He would. Just like flopping. So the cool thing with Lazy Boy is the parts are they have a lifetime warranty on the parts at Lazy Boy. Do you you spend a little bit more on a Lazy Boy? You do, but I think in the long run it's worth it. I've had I've had good success, and it's it's good quality. Now we'll see how long the leather one lasts, the new one, because like we had talked about in the previous episode, that is a COVID chair. That thing was made during COVID, so you know you, you never know. Who got sick? How the quality is? If they if they made it during twenty five people calling in sick, yeah. we'll see. But up until now, since nineteen ninety nine till present, I've had good fortunes with Lazy Boy recliners here and at my mom's place because she still has. Well, she even bought new ones now, so she's had good luck with them as well. Okay. So long story short, spend a few extra dollars and get the Lazy Boy. Shout out to Lazy Boy. Shout out to Lazy Boy, our new sponsor for the Fossil and Songbird podcast. Possibly, if you get a few Lazy Boys out of this, then let us we're going to do a raffle out there. If we get if we get 100 views, we will raffle a Lazy Boy recliner off. Which one? We'll buy one. What? Hundred. We gotta get more than a hundred views, maybe a hundred thousand. Lazy boy recliner, not leather. Yeah, yeah. Pre-COVID, pre-COVID I edition. Get a small one. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID. You need oh. anything pre-COVID? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. I don't know. We'll see who enters. It'll be J versus JP versus Brian Carter versus. Fuck you, Robbie. Yeah, and fuck Robbie. He he won't he won't do it. Son of a bitch. Um. All right, let me see. The only other topics I have are vets are a scam and Target clearance. Unless you if you want to talk about one of those, we can. Otherwise, what was, what was the first one? Vets are vets are a scam. That's my vets I, are a scam. I, yeah, you don't deal with this, but so we got a cat. And this this motherfucker's like uh, he's his whole family's dead. He's that that cat. I think I told you the story. Like patches. People, Are we talking about patches? Patch, yeah, patch. So patch, he's been on diabetes medicine for like ten years, probably, or so, like something like that. Yeah, he's a miracle. Yeah, he's there's a diabetes cat. And they, well, he's he's falling asleep in his water at one point, I guess, from his old owner overfeeding him. And that meant he had diabetes. They were like, he needs insulin. They are like, there's no way this old man's going to give him insulin. So they were like, okay, here's a pill. Give him the pill. The pill will uh, do the same thing if he can get a pill every day or whatever. So we, he was giving him the pill. We started giving him the pill. And then, uh, fuck, we went to the vet six months ago or so just for a checkup. Which is the first mistake don't ever take an animal if there's nothing wrong don't take the animal in because i mean fuck ever since that day they're like oh his diabetes is not in control even though he's he's fine he's seemed like a good way to be moving around doing everything or like his diabetes is he needs another diabetes medicine he needs he has high blood pressure and he has a thyroid problem so we can man. They gave him. Can, four- can, I, can I interrupt you? Yeah. That's why I never go to the doctor. Fuck the doctor. I mean, you ever see the, the doctor case. ever? Never says nothing good to you. Never says, "Hey, good job." He says, 
You're overweight. You have fucking high blood pressure. They never tell you anything good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's- Fuck you, doctors. Well, Go I- to school for fucking eight years to tell me that I'm fucked up. Eat a dick up. I, I get it. Like, if you feel like shit, if something's wrong, you got a lump or whatever, go to the fucking doctor, figure it out. If, I I used to go to, for every year for a physical or a checkup, and, like, just because I'm, I, I was usually fine. Like, they told me to take vitamin D at most. So, whatever. I even even that's fine, because, like, what if you have cancer, skin cancer, whatever. I get it. With the pet, unless the pet's fucking, something's wrong. I don't recommend going in because they found every fucking problem they could. They put them on five different medicines, which they probably get a kickback from all those fucking prescriptions. Then he started losing all kinds of weight and we're like, uh, what's going on? He's lost a pound. Take him in for the next checkup. They're like, yeah, he's lost like a pound in like a month. And like, we, uh, that's a lot, but he was kind of overweight, but I don't know. Maybe he's adjusting the medicine. So then not, like last week he was skinny as fuck he's like just bones we're like hey and they're like oh don't bring him in for another three weeks let him adjust more and then he stopped he every time we give him the pill in this little treat he'd eat it but then eventually he's he stopped started denying that shit like he could tell that shit makes me feel bad when i have it so we're like forcing him to eat it and then one day he just stops eating we're like, okay, we got to take him to the vet, like, today. And they're like, yeah, he doesn't look good at all. I'm like, yeah, no shit. Gave him all this, fu- ever since Fuck you got up. this medicine, all five different medicines, and he's, we think he's 15, but they told us he's 19. So he's an old motherfucker. He was great six months ago. Then we bring him in, and he's fucking, now you're killing him. And then they're like, well, he's got to, like, we got to keep him here and, like, do tests and, like, whatever. They're, like, it's going to be, like, three grand, like, to stay here over the weekend. Like, okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for fucking up my cat. Giving it. And then it took him four or five days to figure out that, oh, we think the second diabetes medicine w- that we started giving him is fucking him up. Like. No fucking shit. Yeah, no shit. I could have told you that the. Second week, he was losing all his fucking weight. So then they, uh, they're like, yeah, you got to start getting him insulin after this. But, like, we're going to get him back to, like, health. Or, like, fine. We'll, if the insulin's better for him, we'll give him the insulin. So we're supposed to have him come home yesterday. He's got explosive fucking diarrhea from all the antibiotics they're giving him for whatever, he's, whatever they say is wrong. So they're like, we can't, we can't give him, like, we don't want him to go home like this. Like, okay, call today. They're like, he's doing great. His levels are great now. But, yeah, still wait till tomorrow, maybe probably Friday. So that, that original quote of three grand was when he was coming home on Tuesday. So these oh, motherfuckers God. are just bleeding us for, it's, just, it's ridiculous. And then he's probably going to, it's, it's bullshit. They're probably going to kill him with this fucking, they killed him. They already killed him down a few notches with this second diabetes medicine. Now we're going to spend all this fucking money and then get this insulin, which is probably expensive as shit. And then he's probably going to die in like a week after they give him back to us because they fuck. It's like if we had never taken him in, maybe all the time, either he'd be fine or he would his high blood pressure and thyroid and diabetes all being fucked up like they said it was either would have kept him alive another four years or he would have died two weeks after like after the appointment that we originally made but either way at least he would have been fucking happy he's been suffering for a fucking week now that is suffering that's fucked up man for him to be like denying treats because he knows there's a pill in him that makes him sick and then we should go fucking boost him out I don't know. Like now it's just, it's like they got, it's like they, I know they supposedly didn't or whatever, but it's almost like they planned like, well, it's an old cat. We'll just like get a bunch of money out of these fuckers. And it, like, I know that's probably not the case, but it seems I very. I kind of disagree. I think that's exactly the case. It's really fucking strange that we take him in for a checkup. Just make sure he's not dying, which was, it was not my idea, but. Not not her fault either. She's trying to, the wife's it's trying to, 
That's she's trying bet. to tell him, like, make sure he's doing well. And then you tell us he's not doing well. He needs five different, like, anybody taking five medications at once, let alone a fucking geriatric, who the fuck adjusts well to that? And, like, you, why, why not try one at a time? They put him on, like, three at once and then gave us two more later. Like, this is fucking ridiculous. They're a bunch of fucking scam Fuck artists. They don't know shit. They they think they know. They say, they tell, and then when I'm in there, it sounds like they know what they're talking about. And I try to be nice, but what the fuck? Like, they're like, oh, yeah, we think this one is fucking them up. No shit. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. To piggyback off what you're saying, I don't go to the doctor. I fucking hate doctors just in general. Like I said earlier, they never tell you anything good. They tell you you're fat. They tell you you're obese. You're overweight. You're not eating unhealthy. You got to exercise more. You got high blood pressure. Your dick don't work. They never tell you anything good. Hey, you lost a few pounds. They don't tell you that. They just tell you what's wrong with you. And they they just use you like they just practice on you. They don't know. Yeah, it's a lot of it's called a practice for a reason, right? Yeah, they think they're fucking god, and they're not. I hate fucking doctors almost as much as. Not that much. I don't hate the doctor as much as I hate the Dallas Cowboys. Because okay. once in a while, the doctor, they can prescribe you the pill to get your fucking dick hard. So you never, you know, in get the, the right Bluetooth. dosage. Get the Bluetooth from uh, Brother Love. Brother Love podcast. We need to get the Bluetooth. Shout out to the Bluetooth. Hey, speaking of the Bluetooth, I got to take a whiz. Give me fucking 48 seconds. I'll be right back. All right. We got, I'm a, a few more, we got a few more things to discuss. Give me a few seconds. I'll, I'll miss it. too. I'll do a tag, tag whiz. I've been in there for an hour. Yeah. I'll see you. Oh, I feel so much better. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah, I fucking hate doctors. They think they're so fucking smart. I bet you I'm done peeing first, so I'm not getting my shit in. I fucking hate fucking doctors. Fuck you, doctors. You ain't fucking no god. Man, this guy fell at work yesterday on the ice, took a bump, and he fucked his back up real bad. And they were like, you gotta go to the doctor, and he's like, I don't want to go to the doctor. And he he's like, he might not be working for like his whole job is like moving heavy shit around, and he might not be working for a while. And they're like, you just gotta go to the doctor, and then we'll have a paper trail we can cover you and pay for it and whatever. And he's like, I don't like doctors. And he didn't fucking go, so now he's fucked. Like if he That's tried, like, blame him. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Like you go there, maybe he's got maybe he's, like you never know. You're scared of what you. It's it's like when you find out you have cancer, then you start fucking dying, you know? If you didn't know... Yeah, if you don't know... Fucking live and then you die, like, you have a heart attack, whatever, it's your time to go. Maybe that's the way to go, you know? If you don't know, you'll never know. At least you're happy. You just and be miserable and worry. Yeah, about- you ain't got to take that motherfucking cock- that cancer cocktail and let your fucking hair falls out. Yeah, it's fucking it doesn't sound like a way to live, but yeah. Fuck then, you, here, doctor. But then Fuck you. Gonna, you're gonna be like, now I gotta do something to try and live, and then you're it's, it just fucks up everything, man. Yeah, your quality of life goes in the toilet. Yeah. Oh well. Um, my my only other topic I had was target clearance. I've been really getting some gems. That's gems? Do you share? Yeah, I'll tell you this. So I gotta send a picture, but my uh. My garage gym just took a fucking notch up because I, I went to um, been I always search Target. I found a fucking Bowflex bench that that it, it's like inclines and declines a little bit. Um, it was originally like two fifty, was seventy percent off, so it's down to seventy five bucks. So I got that you motherfucker. Couldn't afford not to get that. Yeah, and then I was like. Let's keep this going. And I looked on offer up. I found a heavy bag stand. So I got the heavy bag up. So the garage you got gym. A stand for it? Yeah, it's a big white metal stand that was sitting outside. I tried to hose it off. 
and uh, knock any deadly spiders out. And I put tape over the holes just in case. <laughs> paranoia, weed paranoia when I'm not on weed. But uh, yeah, so I got last night I was pissed about Patch. I beat the shit out of that bag for about 40 seconds. And then, uh, yeah, and the, the, the bench is a game changer though, because we were like, ah, oh, we got weights. You can stand up and do shit. But, like, as soon as you have a bench, it's like, oh, now I can do everything. I can do presses and, like, fucking do curls while sitting. And sit in there with a the fucking uh, boom box on. It's great. It's like, I don't even want to go to the real gym now. I just stay there. But, uh... I don't blame you, man. I hate the real gym. It's... I, mean, I shouldn't say that. I'd rather... I, I, I've got my own little setup, and I don't want to be interrupted. I want to do what I want to do. Yeah. If I want to use the bench, I use the bench. I don't want to wait on fucking Kenya or Joe yeah. Blow to use the fucking machine that I want to use when I want to use it. Fuck those yeah. guys. Certain things I'm not going to buy. I'm still going to the gym. I'm going to go fucking use the Stairmaster and, like, certain weights and whatever. But now that I got this, like, it's like, oh, I don't want to go game to Game changer. Yeah, it's a game changer. I, th- I went so hard. I found another one of those benches. I bought another one just in case, or I'm going to sell it to my friend or whatever. But, uh, I was just, just in case I have that, got a jump rope out there. I got about all you need. So, so you stepped up your game in the, in the home, home, home gym says set up. Yeah. Good got deal. There found a clearance Elvis shirt for $7. That was targets. Really target. It's prime time to go to target. I hate saying this to our 10, but I know that it's only like 10 to 12 viewers. So, like, they, there's no chance they're going to see Is there this. a specific target? We're not talking about those fucked up Walmarts, but is there a specific, is there one target that out, outshines the rest? Or it's just target it, in general right now? No, nah, no, nah, it's because it's, it's a lot like the Walmart. You'll go to one target and the thing, the be- say, I went to one target, the bench was 124, so it was only 50% off. And I was like, I was considering it. And then I came back the next week, it was 75. But then, so I bought it. Then the next day I went to another uh, Target. It was still 124 over there. So like, it, it varies. But then I went to another Target out in the fucking, like, pretty much the Mission Hills of Vegas. And uh, <laughs> they, had, they had it for 75. So I was like, I'll buy another just in case. Or like, my buddy might want one. They also had this little elliptical for, like, under your desk. I got it for uh, wife because she just sits at a desk all day. Some pedals or whatever. See how that works. It was 250 It was down to 75 And then because I spent six more than $60, through, like, four times, I got a $20 gift card on my Target account. So Target's really... Dude, you almost got a free figure coming. That's what I'm talking about. I bought a D-Lo for $13 last week. Now, if, like, a new one comes out and it's, like, I need it, then I don't even have to pay. I got – it's $28 on my Target account because every time you spend, you get a certain amount of money you put in your account. And fucking Target hasn't shit my brother love yet. And those fuckers are in the store? I see them everywhere. They're 13 now. You should just return that shit. I'll pick you one up for 13. Did you get the Undertaker? I got them both with free shipping. What the yeah. fuck are they waiting for? I thought Brother Love might be one of those where. I like, thought yes, I I did too. But we were I wrong. It was really good on that shelf next to whatever Undertaker I put it next to. Yeah, because I only, I only saw the Paul Heyman like a few of them, and I don't know, maybe Paul uh, Paul Heyman's obviously more popular than Brother Love, or I don't know, but yeah, we gotta. I don't know what the next line is. I kind of forget, but maybe we gotta. How about the – so there is going to be a Paul Bearer coming at some point, huh? Because yeah. I kind of feel like I do need a Paul Bearer. For sure. For sure need a Paul Bearer. There's uh, – I forget what line that's in, though. I don't know that, if that's even – If a- would have been smarter, let's put this out there. I think I might have been 10. You might have been – no, I think I might have been 13. You might have been 9 or 10. Remember yeah. those – you could have mailed away to get those Jacks, Undertaker, and Bret Hart. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it was like 10 bucks. Fuck, yeah. man. I'm talking oh, like, what's that, 92, 93-ish? Now, yeah. We don't, 
but we wouldn't have known. And back then, it would have been... It was a Hasbro. It was a Hasbro, right? Yeah, would have opened it, too. And that would have taken some value down and, like... But there, there is only X amount of those out there, huh? Yeah, it's it's hard to see. Like, the, the thing I've learned from uh, all this shit, and I, Matt Cardona says it all the time, the demand outweighs rarity. So it's like... You could get these one of three thousand or one of a hundred or or whatever, and like it's you could be collecting certain things, and it's like you never know what's gonna be. I mean, those are rare, and that's and they're in demand, so that's why people why why they're uh, worth a lot. But at the time when you're buying it, it's like you don't have numbers from Hasbro, like oh. They could, it could just have been a ton of overstock and it could have been like a worthless figure. I'm sure there's been situations where they do mail aways and like there's no discernible, like it's no different than another figure they already made. And it's Was like, that oh, the it's WWF magazine at the time. I don't even remember the whole story behind it. It was definitely a mail away, but how did, how did you have to mail away for what was the, the, the promotion? I think it was just like send money, send 10 bucks. Then you get a figure, and it's like in a bag or some shit. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't recall everything. Maybe we could look it up. But uh, yeah, it's just like you never know. Like it's gonna be worth those. There's, there's probably something similar like that that happened that it's not worth anything. But it's just like now the people that want shit or like one two three kid. Back then it was like. Nobody really wanted the one, two, three kid figure necessarily. And it was the end of the line and it became, but it became really rare. And then it was like, Oh, anybody that want to complete their collection had to get it. And then now it's worth, and it, and it's just like more recently too, like 10 years ago was, you could have gotten it for, I don't know, like 40 bucks at the most. And now it's like a $400 figure. So, so the mellow ways, it was the undertaker and Brett, right? Yeah, I think there's a Hogan too. Oh, like with a sh- red shirt on and a bandana or something, but I so don't right know. around WrestleMania nine, probably. Because I kind of thought that was like the original Undertaker with the yeah. gray. It might oh, yeah, that would have been that would have been it. Oh, I think I think he came with a jacket on. But I don't long know. story short, neither one of us have it, and yeah. it's a fuck up on our part. Indirect. We hit the lottery. Oh, to get us. How were we gonna send ten dollars away that we didn't have as fucking? Yeah, that's that's true too. Kids. Like at that age, we weren't. If we we're if it was like now, if they did that shit now, we'd get something like that. We'd we'd get three of them each. Yeah, just in case. But and we do it. We do that type of shit now. We're buying fucking all E and and uh. Probably Gooker. Hey, whatever happened with Gooker Gate? You know what? Fucking uh. On right. the on the major podcast, uh, Brian Myers talked about it. And he's like, "Yeah, it's like the arm just like pops off really easy. Like it's kind of annoying." And that's all he said about it. And nobody else said anything. And I'm like, "I guess it's not a big deal." It's like, I don't know. I it's not a big deal as far as like you're posing it. It's in a pose. Like I have it in a pose where he's coming out of the egg with his arms up. If you don't touch it, then it's fine. But it just seems like shoddy. Like something Mattel wouldn't do. So I I don't know. Maybe I blew it out of proportion. I don't I haven't opened a ton of figures besides elites. Um, so maybe there's certain figures that you open and they have like a pop. You know what they said? They said it's basically like a build a figure parts kind of thing. So with build a figures, I guess that is kind of common that but we well, didn't like, pay for a build a figure. We paid but, for an ultimate. Yeah, you pay for an ultimate. It's two it's a seventy-five dollar set, two thirty thirty dollar figures plus the egg. So that yeah, to me that you know the time out. Are you there? Hello? I can't hear you. Can't hear me? What? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. I can okay, we're good. Hear me? You like you like froze. Oh yeah, it was it was slowing down for some reason. 
I'm good. Good. We're good. We're good. We're good. What the fuck's going on? Probably the MGM hackers. It might be the hackers. They might have infiltrated my computer. They're like, you guys fed your fun. You never go over an hour. Now you're up to an hour and a half. Well, we had a lot to discuss, my brother. We haven't gone in two weeks. Maybe when Skype, uh, like when you go over a certain amount of time, they kill your bandwidth or some shit, and like stuff quality goes down. I don't fucking know. I never gone. Probably. This Probably. Oh, well, maybe we got to wrap it up soon. Unless you got other topics. What do we? We could do a two hour. I gotta call my mom well, back. Just a car accident that I was in the other day. Oh, yeah. I don't really want to, you know. What's happened, Lexus? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you what happened. So we had to take center store inventory. And center store inventory, for those of you that don't know, fucking sucks. So I had to run point on center store inventory. So I had to go back to work after I worked my ass off for 14 hours on Sunday. I had to go back in Monday early at 4 a.m. And long story short, I was just driving my car, Lexo, white Lex. And I get to the part on the 246 where this, the lane splits into the two lanes where you can go 65 like a raccoon or a possum or something came out coyote and there was no like avoiding it and it just fucked up the poor lex as you saw in the pictures so now the poor lex is on the disabled list she's in the shop right now and hopefully they fix her up really good that's terrible who knows how much this is going to end up costing me because unfortunately andrew campbell farmer's insurance who i thought was okay I don't even think you cook a fucking hot dog in the microwave at this point. <laughs> and if you can't fucking cook a hot dog in the microwave, you got a fucking problem. And Andrew Campbell, I don't think you can cook a fucking hot dog in the microwave. Holy shit. So farmer's insurance fucking sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It, basically, farmer's insurance sucks. And I don't care who hears that. I have guy cook. I'm sure after this is all said and done, I'm going to have fucking the new insurance. Okay. Hopefully state, former all state. Yeah, yeah. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Guess not. Cheap plug. As long as I can bundle my home and auto. Yeah, um, yeah. Good deal. I think we got bundled with Geico. Home and auto. Yeah. Don't go to farmers and don't go to fucking Andrew Campbell, whatever you do. Sounds like a real piece of shit. I don't know. I don't know. She can't cook a hot dog in the microwave, so. That's pretty much all I got to say. Uh, the Eagles have got a big game with the Vikings tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Fucking, that's quick. They just played on Sunday. Yeah, right? I know. The Eagles kind of got the. They're, they're kind of um, at a disadvantage. They got the short week this week. Eagles trying to fuck them. America's new team. Yeah, they caught that fucking murder Brazilian murder with the Eagles jersey on, right? Yeah. What was that all about? I saw I the pictures. Up. I guess he was. I think he was living here, and he he murdered his girlfriend in front of their kids, like with was a knife. Was she speaking out of? Obviously, she had to have been speaking out of turn. Then most likely, and then uh, he's on the run. He's like the Brazilians were like excited because he's like fuck them. They're like fuck America or something. I don't know, something like that. He's like a folk hero about murdering a lady in front of her kids or something. I don't know. Let's you could we'll do more research, but uh, they had to get the border patrol to catch him, huh? I don't. I guess I, he was just hiding out in the woods or something of chess. This is eagle shit. Fucking. They he got the eagles publicity. Did you see that link I sent where there there's the dude at the press conference? I guess he's a small dude. They're like, is there a chance that, or did you guys think there was a chance that he would get another small man and do the little rascal trench coat? Let's try and get away. <laughs> they, the guy was like, they asked me really politely to leave. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I yeah. could see that one. You got? Do you want to get your shit in? Did you get? Did you get your shit in yet? Um, oh. not really. I'm going on a fu fucking uh road trip job on, starting Sunday to Arizona. Where are you off to? Just like Arizona and like maybe Utah. I don't really know. Like Arizona, home of the songbird. Yeah, the, the songbird. Hopefully, I. Hear, hear your song on the radio when we're driving Hopefully through. Hopefully they don't fucking detain you in the Phoenix airport. 
Yeah, I don't. I we're driving. Don't they have chairs out there in California. Oh yeah, those fuckers. They didn't want to ship our fucking chairs we paid for. They acted like we wanted to ship them for free. Fuck off. We couldn't have been the only ones doing that either. Yeah, I'm sure we were. Remember then I asked, hey, can I talk to your boss? Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. And he, when he got the boss and I explained everything to him, he's like, man, this guy was a complete asshole to us. Yeah, yeah. I was shipping the chair at American Airlines. How you talk to people in Arizona? Fuck. Yeah. How did people talk to? Dude, I got to tell you, I've had bad experiences in that airport, in that really? Phoenix airport, three different times. Well, that incident... Another time pre-COVID, I went to see my cousin and I got do I got I got um, talked to by the stewardess because they left us on the tarmac and I says, "Hey, let me fly the fucking plane. I don't know how to land it, but I'll fucking I'll fly it. You just find somebody to land it." So I got talked to and they left us on the plane. And then another time, oh, the time when we went to see the Eagles and the Raiders. During the COVID, yeah, I had my my baklava that I had been wearing, and they said, "Oh, you need to wear a mask on the flight." And I was like, "Well, I got one." He's like, "That's not a mask. Anybody that comes to a real estate would not let you on a flight with that kind of a mask." Then I had to get a special fucking mask at the Phoenix airport. Yeah, I've had nothing but bad luck in that Phoenix airport, but I did sing a. a I mean, if you go back and you watch the original Arizona Songbird singing the joy. I was just happy to be getting the fuck out of Phoenix at that point, at the Phoenix yeah. airport, because everybody in Phoenix is just a bro. J bro knees. That's that's true. Like John Mayer band playing. Yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah. When he was singing and Pat called him out. Shit. Um. <laughs> oh, and my only other thing is, uh, I I sent you guys the poster, but I'm supposed to wrestle in. Barry on uh, the 28th. Patrick's birthday. He said he's down to go. Where's it at? It's in San Ramon, which is like... That's way up by Oakland, isn't it? Yeah, it's near Oakland, so I'll either fly to Oakland or we'll drive or whatever. But On the 28th? Yeah. 28th, so... Two weeks, two weeks from tomorrow? Of October. Oh, of October? Yeah, October 28th. So you got... Over a month to plan if you want to go. Maybe we could hit Russian River or something. I don't know. If we want is, that to with Jek- is that with Jekyll's? Yeah, Jekyll's promotion in San Ramon. He lives in, I think he lives there, near there. So we Dude, could, I think I'd be down to do that. Yeah, because it could tentative? be like a, Tentative? Yeah, it could be like a couple day thing. But we'll see. At least one. Yeah, I think I, I, I'm tentatively down for that. Yeah. If I don't go to Philly to see the Eagles play the Dolphins when they re-debut the Kelly Green jerseys. That's Kelly Green first debut. That's when they're going to re-debut them. Fuck on yeah. the 27th of October. Oh, okay. And then so we might be still... We'll still you said the 28th? Great. Oh, maybe it is. I forget what day of the week that 28th is. I never looked it up. I just said, like, no, I'm doing it. The 28th is Saturday. Oh, so maybe the Eagles are playing the 29th. Okay. They're playing the Dolphins. I thought it was the 27th. You can fly straight out of Oakland to... To Philly. 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 Special. Yeah. I'm tentatively, yeah. I'm tentatively in for that one. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk more. If we don't go to L.A. for the Foley thing and all that, I don't know. Sure, that hasn't sold out, huh? Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Maybe they'll cancel, you know, like they did last time you wanted to see. Yeah, four. damn. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. I might well, be. You Why ready? You good? Yeah. I'll pr- I might All right, go. I'm good too. You kind of got extra shit in today. Yeah, hour and 40. Pretty, pretty. It might be our longest, besides the ones we didn't put online because we were wasted. All right, my man. All right. Be in touch. I look forward to hearing from you Friday. 
live from the Friday Figure Hut. Oh I'll yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I'll be working like a perro. Yeah. Fuck. But, uh, I always enjoy. I always enjoy the Friday text on the Figure Hut. That'll be fun. Yeah, I've nothing too great lately, but I'm I'm betting this week's the week. I have, a, I have a feeling this week's the week. Yeah, it's got to be. Right. What's up, KP? Yeah, JP. Number number two fan. Hey, right, shout out to KP too. KP's not related to JP, but we got to give a shout out that way too. Sure. Why not? All right, my man. We'll be in touch. All right. See you later. Later, brother. Shout right. out to everybody. Have a good night. Yeah. Get off drugs. Get your pets spayed and neutered. Right. Later. All right. Hit them high and watch our eagles fly.